Thanks for dropping into the cast party. Join the cast and crew as they are hightailed from their Hollywood film set into the crazy world of Dungeons and Dragons. And action! It's, it's one of those trends where you can just be like blank blank type beat and it usually comes up with something. Redacted. 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 I keep saying things that either have to be redacted or bleeped out. Bleep out the name of it, I guess. Redacted. 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 Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cast Party. My name is Colin McManus, and I will be your director for today. I am joined by my itinerant cast and crew, Ryan McManus. I don't know what that means. Hi, Sebastian Vivaldi Greensleeves, an emo at heart musician who has never been cave exploring before, which he only recently learned was called spelunking. He originally thought that's what they called it when uh, the kids went out to the bridge and threw big rocks down into the river, which he really, really liked to do. Because spelunk. Because <laughs> like when the the rock hits the water, it's like spelunk. Yeah, it's so it's so satisfying. Ryan, I went into the Google Docs and I typed in itinerant and I did define itinerant and it does in fact mean traveling from place to place. Nice. That's a weird way to do that. I guess <laughs> I didn't. I would have just like Google I searched know. it, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got the right answer, so. Anna Brisbane. That explains the word itinerary. It's like your traveling oh, plans. Shit. Itinerary. Oh my god. <laughs> That's your fun Whoa. fact. That's all you need. You just blew all of our minds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, blueberry all of your minds. Okay. Oh wow. I'm playing Blueberry <laughs> Sky. So Blueberry had never. Uh, it's 9 a.m. right now. I'm gonna be talking like a child. Um, who had never seen any fantasy or sci-fi film, let alone read any of the books before being cast in Three Realms of Myria and then she was told to watch Fellowship of the Ring as homework and she begrudgingly did and then became quickly obsessed and watched all the movies and then The Hobbit and then found out their extended cuts and then watched those and then she tried to start reading The Hobbit but couldn't finish chapter one. <laughs> Oof. I so beyond relate to that. I was gonna say that's just me. She not like to read? <laughs> she is not a reader. I want to watch all the fantasy. I just don't want words. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do you watch with subtitles on? Yes, but that's begrudgingly. Those are different words. <laughs> Those are different words. You are reading the words that are in the book, <laughs> but just as they're said. No, no, no. There are way more extra words in the book. True. Yeah, but when you watch with subtitles on, you got to look down, up, down, up, and then you're missing like half the movie. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, you got to watch more anime, buddy. You got to. You gotta... No, I hate it. You just got to do it, man. And you get so used to it. I can't read and I'm I'm able to do that. So it's that's come on. All right. We're not getting into we'll talk about it in the BTS. <laughs> Nigel Deacon. <laughs> How's it going? Xander Gucci Supreme, who uh, had to go to cowboy camp for three years when he was a kid. He was a buckaroo boyo by the end of his time there with several spurs in lasso and whip training. <laughs> He was going to return for year four, but they told him this camp ain't big enough for 12 year olds. And he had to stay home that summer. What? It's just like uh, all I'm picturing is like SpongeBob with his little gold stars. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. Vince Marino. <laughs> <laughs> it's so long three interests. Uh, Jet, Jet the, the, the burly heart, heartthrob guy. Yeah, big guy. Um, So fun fact, he uh, never had clams until he was about in his early 20s. And he instantly became obsessed. Steamed clams, not raw. No, we don't do raw clams. We want to do raw oysters, just throwing it out there. But he became so obsessed that he wanted to get his own. So he ended up, when he got some money with work, he bought his own boat. And now he's trying to teach himself how to go clamming. <laughs> clamming. Last time, you sent Nomura down the tunnel system ahead of you underneath Tolaby Lighthouse. He went about 100 feet down before seeing a tunnel with a dim flickering light connecting to the main tunnel with drag marks. You decide to take your time and come back tomorrow before venturing to the Underdark. Sebastian lit the lighthouse while Blueberry and Jet took the two living drow and placed them in the prison with some food and water. You left for the night before it got too dark and headed to get some falafel. 
On your way there, you passed by the front of the castle and found a courtyard with four large evergreen trees that had fake grass around them and were being guarded by the town guard. There was also a group here praying to one of the trees. Xander talked to one of the guards who called them moon trees sent down by Saitia. You headed to get some falafel at Insomnia Falafel, saw a breakup happen while waiting for your food, and then headed back to the courtyard. You ate your falafel and watched as the group praying to the trees moved from one to the next before dispersing at the fountain. You finished your food and headed back to Matthias' University of Modern Magic, gave Kanu and Matthias their food, and spoke with Matthias about your findings. He told you that, yes, the drow most likely are slaving in Faramor, but he doesn't know why as they generally get their slaves from the other races of the Underdark. Heading to bed, you all awoke level 5 before heading back to the lighthouse and delving into the tunnels below. Nomura once again scouting ahead, you decided to only follow the drag marks even though there were many tunnels connected to the main corridor. You descended deeper into the ground before coming upon a metal door which was locked from this side. You opened the door and entered a massive open space of the Underdark. Following wheelbarrow tracks to a nearby city, you discovered three monstrous beings attacking the city which had already killed five people. These large creatures with beetle-like carapaces, long vulture necks and heads, and muscly legs and arms that ended in hooked claws. Now you are walking upon this scene. Three drow and two dead dragonborn on the ground. One monster climbing the nearby watchtower, another feasting on a drow corpse next to an overturned wheelbarrow, and one scratching at the front gate of this city attempting to climb it. And so the scene is set. The question is, what will you do next? I want to try to scare these things away. I can, I can summon a, a spirit to try to lure them, chase it away. They're like nine feet tall. You think we can scare them or lure them? Not scare them, but it, they'll be like, ooh, yummy, and they'll chase it. If it doesn't work, then we can just I can just use the spirit to fight with us. It'll still be convenient either way. What is it going to look like? Uh, it's a face spirit. Um, it'll resemble a fae creature. I don't know much about fae creatures, so I'm just going to imagine something. Is it going to look tasty to them? Like, do we have to put butter on it? Sure. A fae crab? I don't know. Do we want to try to use Namora and the fae creature and possibly lead him down somewhere? I don't... Even if we do get him away, how are we going to get into this city? I don't see any sort of entrance. There's a gate right there. Oh, oh, it's behind the big boy. I got it. Yeah. How hard is it going to be to get into that gate? Aw, oh, man, it's nothing. I'm going to hold up the lockpick. And I, I got my key in case they don't let us in. Oh, true, 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 true. Uh, I mean, it's it's worth a shot, but how long do you think we're going to have? How how long can Nomura and this, this little summon guy keep their attention, if they even get it at all? I can keep them up for up to an hour. Can they go super far? Yeah, yeah, I think they could go wherever I want them to go. I mean, it's not going to hurt to try. We should come up with a plan before, though, if they do actually take the bait. Then we go talk to the people at the gate. They did. Wait, is, isn't there someone up in a watchtower? You did not see anyone in the watchtower. There's got to be someone in there. If he's not even up there yet, there's still someone in there. But why do we want to go to the watchtower? Because there's someone there to let people in the gate. I don't know. Isn't that how gates work? I think if we can lead these guys away, someone's got to take notice of it and be able to let us in. Yeah. Do we see, like... A kind of clear path for us to get to the gate. Give me perception. 14. You are on like a main pathway that seems like this is the pathway people walk. The pathway goes to the gate as well as to the watchtower. For the gate that we see, is there any way that we can walk through that's somewhat covered so that we can hide if these things do lose the... If Nomura and the, the fey creature lose their attention and they start walking back, we can just hide real quick. There's nothing specifically in, like, the gate area. It is, it is a pretty flat wall other than that is angled outward to stop these things, obviously, from climbing in. Near the gate, there are a bunch of these wheelbarrows that they have been using. That is something you could hide behind. There are a couple of these smaller trees. We could, we could go along the eastern side, scour into the mix of the trees, and then shoo them west, right? Because that's away from the watchtower. 
We could try. Uh-huh. And then we can, if we're scoured in the little bit of trees, once they're at least out of sight, it's an easier trip for us to run to the gate, too. Do the wheelbarrows look mobile? Give me investigation. 15. So one of these things is currently eating a drow that is next to an overturned wheelbarrow. Right next to this wheelbarrow is a dragonborn body, which is also dead. It looks like they have been moving people with these wheelbarrows. They are just sat next to this city. This is just like where they keep them. So they're not tied down or anything. Okay. So what do you guys think about we try to get their attention, bring them off to the... You wanted to bring them to the west, Sebastian? I think so. All right, let's bring them off to the west, and then I'll bring the wheelbarrow over towards the gate, and then we can hide behind that while we're trying to open it with your lockpicks, Xander. Okay. In case they decide to turn around, they won't see us automatically. That works for me. Worth a shot. Okay. We all in? Let's do it. All right. Okay, I'm gonna druid craft a little pink hibiscus sort of flower into my hand. And whisper some sort of sylvan, or I guess I don't know sylvan, but like elvish stuff that I don't understand to it. And it's going to grow into this fairy looking creature, but like small, Uh, like a large fairy, but a small creature. I'll let it have wings, but it's not going to fly. And I'm choosing the mirthful mood. What's that? <laughs> I'm supposed to choose a mood when I summon it. So, oh. summoning a fae spirit, I'm choosing Mirthful. So it's this happy looking fairy girl and I'm going to whisper to her, tell her to go lure those creatures away by looking really tasty and if it goes really wrong you can't get them to leave, then you can attack. Hopefully she runs off and does that. Is Namora going to be joining or... I'll have Namora do basically the same thing. Whichever one, I think I'll tell Namora to go for the one in the watchtower and just like flick it in the back of the head to get its attention and then fly away (laughs) towards the east. No, sorry, towards the west, towards the west. Xander, roll me intimidation for whatever creature to see if you can basically make these things want to chase. Can I walk over to Namora and cast Prestidigitation on Namora? To smell like a steamed lobster with butter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to get an advantage, man. <laughs> okay, I will allow that intimidation with advantage for that. <laughs> oh my god. Do you want me to roll with Namora's stats or my stats? I think Namora's stats. Okay. Thank you for the advantage. Um, the face spirit is going to use its bonus action to face step, which is teleporting 30 feet to an unoccupied space and then use its mirthful mood. So it's going to get within like 30 feet of one closest to us on the ground. And then if she's within 10 feet, she can force it to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh. And if it fails, then it's charmed by her and me for one minute. These things are not that wise. That is a fail. Aha! So she's just going to be like luring it with her fingers and being like, come on, follow me. Oh no, don't chase me. Oh, sort of thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like it. a little Perfect. kid on a playground. <laughs> yeah. like, oh no, stay away. Oh no. <laughs> Xander, what was Nomura's charisma check? Uh, he got an eight. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's better than the first five that I got. Oh, so. no. So Namora goes up to this thing on the watchtower and a little flick at the back of the head. This thing is so big, it barely even notices it and it's still climbing. The one that is on the ground, Blueberry, this is the one that was chomping on this drow body, does catch your your face spirit and kind of starts to slowly move at it not like rushing at it because it's kind of this weird charmed but also wants to eat it so it doesn't know exactly but it is obviously caught this thing's attention and it is starting to move that way there's still the one at the gate and then the one on the watchtower i'm not even going to throw us into initiative yet because they all have their purpose right now the face spirit would 
try to pick up the other one as well by like passing up and around it in a circle and th- and then going west if it can pick up both of them hoping that like the one following it will kind of help pick up its attention and stuff I like that I will I will allow the one following it to give the face spirit advantage on a charisma check to try to get the other one to follow mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. That's a 21. This face spirit is easily able to grab this other monstrosity. It is no longer clawing at the door. It was like trying to climb and get footholds and everything like that. It pops down looking at its friend and they are both starting to move towards the west. Though there is still the one on the watchtower. I'm going to step up right behind the tree to the west. So I'm within 30 feet of the one on the watchtower. And I would like to cast Suggestion to the bug on the watchtower. Does that work on creatures? It influence a creature you can see within range that can hear and understand you. Oh, can it understand me? What if it, uh, Nomura just made it fall? <laughs> just pull up one finger at a time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it's got these giant fucking claws, so what, yeah. maybe that's like Eldritch Blast or some shit? I don't know if these things would be able to understand me. All right, before he does that, I'm going to tell Nomura to sit on its face. Excuse me? <laughs> Not like in a weird way, just like it's a big thing. It has a face. No more is small, just sit on it. Like, <laughs> is there not a weird way to sit on someone's face? Yeah. When it's a small little creature and it just goes and sits on you. Like, have you ever been asleep and your cat just like walks over and like lays down on your face? Yeah. Cat hat? Yeah. No, a cat has not sat on my face. Thank you. Ah, uh, your cats don't like you that much. Sorry, bro. <laughs> it's not like, ooh, eat my ass. I'm going to sit on your face. It's just like going to sit down like on its head. Oh, okay, when you have a bird, when it's like lands on a thing, do you always say that it's standing on the perch? It's like, no, look, he's sitting up on the branch. That's a dirty 20 to hit Nomura. <gasps> Oof. That is 10 piercing damage. How can it hit? It has its hands in the wall. How can it hit its own face? So it only needs one hand to climb because it's got four yeah, appendages. Yeah, but like, it, can it reach its own face? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. That thing is a giant fucking monster. It's just... <laughs> Nomura takes 10 piercing damage. Well, all right. Don't make fucking sense. <laughs> is the more still up? I have no idea. What is his? <laughs> oh no, he's definitely not. So Nomura goes poof as this thing smacks it. Uh, I'm gonna do something. No, wait, maybe not. I don't know. Uh. This thing would look down now that he's attacked Nomura, and it sees you all. Son of a bitch. I don't look around when I smack away a bug. I'm not just like, what? Who else is here coming to attack me when I smack away a bug? Nomura is a little bit more than a bug. This not is to like that a... thing. It's a giant monster. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? This is like a bat flying into your face and trying to stand on your head. Yeah, okay. I don't look around. I'm like, oh, no, all these bats that are on the ground, it would look up. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we're going to roll initiative. <laughs> I should have done my thing. You can see that the other two monstrosities have moved 100 plus feet away. And for reference, the phase speed is 40 feet. So she's going to be using that to try to keep away from them. That is actually really good to know. They literally cannot keep up with the fae. Yes. 22. 21. Now I reach the fucking nat 20. This is stupid bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it when I smell like buttery lobster, but I got it. Right now. <laughs> Six. Four. Opposite ends of the spectrum here. Xander, you're first. I want to move just like a little bit up to the northeast, and then I'm going to shoot an Eldritch Blast at the, the claw that's still in the wall, just whichever one I can hit. It's got one in the wall, because the other one just finished smacking Amora. If you're attacking the claw specifically, I'm going to add two to its AC. Cool. Go ahead. Give me attack roll. Dirty 20. Dirty 20 hits. Fuck yeah. Yes. All right. So that is max damage with 14. This thing starts falling backwards. It's still got its feet in, but it is currently not able to hold on. It looks like this thing is not doing great. It is still your turn. Um, What other bonus actions do I have? I don't even know. Well, you still have part of your action now that you're level five. Excuse me? 
you can do two Eldritch Blasts every time you Eldritch Blast now, remember? Holy shit, I totally <laughs> forgot about that. <laughs> well, do I, I roll again for another attack, right? Yeah, well, are you going for just this thing, or are you going for one of its feet? I'm going to go for its feet, try and get it again. It's only a 12. 12 doesn't hit, bounces off the watchtower. This thing's flailing around a little bit. It was hard to get a good eye on it. And then I guess that's pretty much all I got because my bonus actions are not worth it. Sebastian, you're up. I'm panicked. I'm doing my thing. Yeah, we're going to cast Thunder Wave. Okay. Centered below him in hopes to projectile him up and out. Kind of like the watchtower had like an explosive on it. If you did this, you would have to get directly underneath him. Oh, yeah, I'm going to run up straight up to the bottom of the watchtower, like basically underneath him and just boom, try to smack right below the watchtower to projectile him up and out. Yeah, smack that ass. And I'm going to do this at third level. Jesus. It's a con save, right? Yes, a 15. Is it coming from your guitar or from you? This is my hands this time. I had an eight. Ah! This bitch gonna fall on you. No, that's why I said <laughs> up and out. <laughs> 15. Ooh. Okay, so that's 15 thunder damage. I only moved like 20 feet. If I see it coming back down on top of me, I'll use my other 10 to run out of the way. I'm gonna have you do that. Okay. <laughs> but give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, God. A big chunk of this watchtower. Oh, God. Bunch of rocks are falling right on you right now. I regret my decision. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a 23. <laughs> oh. How'd you do your thunder wave? Was it, was it guitar or was, what'd you do? We'll do a big snap and kind of like whip the snap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you run up, you snap really loud, reverberates up the watchtower. You can see all of the bricks like rumble as it goes upward and some of these bricks start falling. But so does this creature get propelled 10 foot into the air. As you run the other way, you're able to get out of the way of this creature as well as all these rocks. Roll me 3d6, please. It was 20 foot in the air. As you hit it, it goes 10 foot higher. You got it. Ooh, clean 15. Hot damn. So this thing falls real loud. You can hear a crack as part of its carapace is snapped off that is on its back. Ooh, carapace. Ew. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, yes. That is the monstrosity's turn. It rolls over slightly and is able to stand up and does a loud... Oh, no. As it runs oh, no. towards you, Sebastian. Yeah one of these huge hooked claws. It's scythe-like, but it looks like it's made of bone. Ew. And it comes, and it swings down on you. That's a 24 to hit. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's 11 piercing damage. Oh, okay. I was expecting other things to happen. And then he swings along with the left claw. That's only a 14 to hit? That <laughs> just hits. 14? We're not all shielded up like you, bro. <laughs> and that is 12 more piercing damage. Forgot I had cutting words. God damn it. Well, Blueberry, you are up. Jet, you're on deck. I'm going to run uh, about 30 feet to the west and um, just summon forth my thorn whips and try to pull this thing away from Sebastian. All right. Give me that attack roll. Yeah, that's a dirty 20. Oh, yeah. You know, you're behind it at this point. It has this crack in its carapace, and you're basically able to get right through that crack to pull at its insides. <laughs> and I Ugh. yank it eight piercing damage from the thorns and yank it 10 feet towards me. Thank you. You yank it 10 feet towards you. Give Sebastian a little bit of breathing room. This thing's looking really fucked up already. That fall and that thunder wave... It hit it hard. That's it. All right, Jet, go ahead. Finish him off, boy. Okay, so he got pulled closer to me, so I'm going to move, what, 15 feet, half my speed right up to him. And as I'm running up to him, I want to take my hammer and just swing it as I'm running right towards his knee. Oh, give me an attack roll. 
Does a 25 hit? God damn, boy! Yes, it does. <laughs> Roll me that damage. Okay, so five damage. Jet, it's yours. Damn, son. Let's go. While I'm running over and I hit it in the knee, it's going to topple over. And when it does, I'm just going to bring my hammer right back around and slam it into its head. Oh, squish. The whole thing just smacks to the ground. You could hear the knee crack as you hit it. And this thing starts bleeding all over the ground. It is no more. So we are out of initiative. <sighs> oh. That was like such a beautiful top to bottom, perfectly one round. Yep. <laughs> Everyone got their oh, it was, it was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Claps for that. There's just just that was so satisfying. Everybody throwing a snap in the chat. Teamwork. We all <laughs> quadruple high five. Let's go. And for the first oh. time ever. <laughs> just, wait, do we have to roll performance on a four way high five? I will. Would it be like two hands for two people and then the square other side? Five. Yeah, square <laughs> high five. <laughs> Can we roll for it? Yeah, everyone roll me performance. Dirty 20. Ooh, 24. Oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, baby, 23. 23. Let's oh go! Oh, my God! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Pull your camera out. Oh, my God. It's so clean. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Take, take the camera out, throw it in the air, and set the timer, <laughs> and have it pointing down so we're all bam. And we make a star. <laughs> a star. A uh, square. <laughs> Wait, square. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm excited. <laughs> I will inspire you for this. I feel like with the 23, we could do whatever, or like everyone. I mean, you could just do that with everyone beating a <laughs> yeah. 20. <laughs> oh God, that's what we're used to, Don. <laughs> <I know. Yeah. laughs> You know what? I could just like set it up with the timer super quick on that tree so that it catches us all like in the air doing the jump. It's like that classic like sitcom ending where everyone's like jumping together. You set up the camera. You guys do your beautiful high five. Beautiful photo, by the way. Hi, 20? I don't know. What would you call it? Hi, square. That's 40. Square. That's 40 fingers I think right it's there. high 40. Yeah. Uh, well, no, because high five is, is 10 fingers, but you still call it five. Each of us are doing high tens, though. <laughs> I don't know. And there's four of us because we're doing two hands. We're each doing two hands. <laughs> All right. You do a high 40. It's beautiful. The picture turns out really nice. It's not exactly above you. It's got like a little bit of an angle. So you can kind of see everybody's facial features and stuff as well. They're all everybody's happy doing this jump. There is the hook horror on the ground in front of you. You're jumping around it and creating like a nice little frame for it. Oh my God. This is some cult shit. I need this fan art. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we, we need this one. I want this so bad. Xander, when you pop open that camera though, you can see that the blood from the hook horror has started soaking into the cracks in the ground. And it says Nomura. Oh. All right. There it is. I want to look off into the distance to the west, see if I can get any visual on the others. Yeah, you would be able to. This literally was only six seconds. <laughs> so they have not gone super far. This area, it does have residual light from the city, so it's not complete darkness. They're getting just off into the area where you cannot even see them, but they are both still following your fey creature. So as the dust settles from your fight and the monstrosities running away... It is momentarily silent. There's just that little reverberation from the high 40. The large black gate to the city ahead of you remains closed. I'm going to whisper yell up to the tower. Anyone up there? Hey! You can see the main door to the watchtower that is just up this small flight of stairs that Sebastian has now littered with little chunks of rock. A drow man, only about five foot tall, begins stepping down the few steps to the ground and comes towards you. Behind him, a drow woman comes running out of the watchtower and passes him as she runs to one of the nearby drow bodies on the ground just outside the main gate. You can barely hear her weeping over her dark chainmail clanking with every step. I'll run with her. Blueberry starts running after her towards this body at the main gate. The man continues towards you and says, Many thanks. 
Sorry about your watchtower. <laughs> he gives it a good look up and down. Ah, kept me safe enough. I appreciate the assistance. Can I ask what your business is here? We're, we're kind of just looking for some information, honestly. What information are you looking for? Uh, it revolves around uh, some big old creature that you guys have down here. Could Can we talk inside the city in case those things come back? You want passage into Gallomir? If you wouldn't mind. It's a dope name. I can get you inside. To allow you to walk freely amongst the city, we will have to talk to Delzok Ilsthir. That's a dope name. <laughs> <laughs> he is the one who keeps the city safe. Yeah, we can we can talk with whoever you want. We're just we're just trying to find a safe spot so we can get our info and and we'll be on our way. We're not going to stay too long. Can I tell that this drow is long gone? As you get over there, the woman is weeping. She takes a glance at you but doesn't say anything. She kneels down next to this body. Give me medicine. Oh, that's only a 7. These wounds look real nasty. This drow is not currently breathing. Uh, I'm still going to cast first level cure wounds. Or try to put my hands on one of the largest wounds and basically druid craft some bright green, you know, very springy vines to try to stitch it together. How much did you heal for? Seven. You are able to close up one of these larger wounds. It looked like one of these hooks from these horrors really caught this guy right in the abdomen. There is no rousing of his face of any kind. I'm sorry. The woman continues weeping. You can see she starts gathering the belongings of the drow man and putting them into a small pile. And then she crosses the arms around his abdomen towards his hips and she pulls out a small knife you can see that she begins cutting the man's hair all while weeping quietly I'm just gonna nod and silently back away <laughs> she is taking the hair and she's putting it along with the other belongings hmm. and the other drow man that you guys were all talking to starts to move towards the gate and he gestures you to come forward. As he gets closer to the gate, he shouts, Pantar Lilviden! The right door of the large double-doored gate opens after a moment of waiting. The door moves slowly, but reveals a large open city. And I say it like that because it doesn't really feel like a city, even just from like what you can see. It's large, and the area that is inside, that is, like, walled off, is huge. But the buildings are quite spread out. There are clusters here and there, but large open areas that don't seem to be used for anything. There are these large areas of stalagmites that have this glowing fungus on them that is emanating a light glow. Around the main pathways, there are torches set every dozen feet or so, most of which are currently lit. <laughs> On the main pathway leading inside is a large drow man wearing a deep purple robe surrounded by many drow guards. They are wearing leather armor, but the leather is not like a generic tan or brown like you've seen so many times before. It is darker, like a gray black. You can see that some of them still have long hairy portions still attached to the leather. Whoa! It also looks to have a different texture than the leather you're used to. The main drow man in the robe has long grayish white hair, a short sword sticking out from underneath the robe, and has a bracelet around his wrist that connects to a chain that goes to a halfling's neck. Oh no. Who is dressed in rags with no footwear standing beside no, him. No, no, no. And the drow man from the watchtower begins walking in and gesturing you forward. While we're walking, can I uh, drink my potion of healing? What, you, we, we have spells, you idiot. Okay. I don't want to use them. Those are expensive. More expensive than spells. Oh, fine. I'll cast Cure Wounds at second level. <laughs> hey, what'd that say? Twelve. Thanks. <laughs> you can see the drow man with the halfling next to him. Delmar Malagros. 
why are you bringing outsiders into Gallomere? And the man you have been walking up with says, Delzak, Ilsthir, I apologize. These outsiders chased off the Glen. They requested access inside Gallomere. The main guy goes, Tourists, am I right? Hey, tourists, what's your business here? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, we're just tourists. We're looking for this creature. It's kind of tentacly. It's called our not not nath nerth, uh, mm, guys. Nathrix. 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 We're looking for one of those. Big 15 feet. It's like this floating. Well, actually, does it float or does it swim? I don't know. It doesn't have legs. It floats. Eyeballs. It's got a lot of eyeballs. Ever heard of it? Well, that is interesting. Going after a very dangerous creature. Yeah. You want to pray to it like those crazy Darrow? They are always dying to see it. And he looks around at his other guards and all the guard go, Ha. <laughs> nah, bro, we trying to we trying to get some of them eyes. Y- yeah. Oh. Can I cast message to Blueberry? Hi, Blueberry. Hi, what the fuck? <laughs> I kind of say that out loud, quietly. (laughs) (laughs) Does that halfling look familiar to you? Does the halfling look familiar to me? Yes. What the fuck? I knew it. It's from the picture. Picture? From the lighthouse. Oh! Now that Sebastian has brought it up, you look at him, he looks very different just because he is now malnourished. He's skinnier. He's got these rags on. He's dirty. So you didn't actually notice it directly at first, but now that you're looking, it does look like the older halfling man from the lighthouse. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. The man says, Nathrix, huh? All right. So you you want to kill it? Yeah. Kill, maim, you know, whatever. Whatever we need to do. He, like, looks around at all his guards behind it. And he's, like, nodding a little bit. All right. Yeah. You want to, like, play spats or whatever? Well, no, I mean, we don't expect you to live. Well, I don't expect you to live. Well, then you'd win if you bet against us, right? Like, come on. (laughs) So, let's get you to do that. I like that. You want to go and fight it. Finding it's going to be difficult. But the first thing you can do is probably follow the moonless channels. Okay, Uh Uh-huh. As far as I know, it's deep into the Underdark. So, the moonless channels is probably the best place for it. Can you go on record by saying what the fuck that is? (laughs) Tourists. You know, like rivers and stuff? Yeah, familiar. The Underdark has one main waterway. You know, it splits off at times, and like sometimes there's lakes, sometimes there's rivers, but it's it's all just the moonless channels. I, well, I feel like you just saying, like, if it's all the moonless channels and be like, yeah, just follow the moonless channels. That's like, that's some pretty vague shit. Like, that's like, you drop us into the Amazon forest, and you're like, yeah, follow the trees. And it's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> It, <laughs> this shit's all trees, bro. I don't come from up where you guys are, you know? Sun's really strong down here, so... And he looks around, and all the guards go, Ha! How many guards are here? Twenty. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> so, can I tell that the guards don't like this guy? Give me insight, Blueberry. Sixteen. The guards don't necessarily look like they hate this guy, They just look annoyed. You have only been here for a few minutes, and this guy has tried these garbage jokes already. It seems like these guards have just had enough of it. Okay. (laughs) Garbage? Oh, (laughs) Nigel, you're better than that. No, I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) How close are they to him? There are guards all around. The closest ones are within 5, 10 feet. Okay, all right. So I want to really focus in on this guy. I just want to try to tell if he's speaking the truth to us or not, because I'm worried about this Nathrix, and I want to cast Zone of Truth. Ooh. Okay. So, read me Zone of Truth exactly, and are you putting yourself in the Zone of Truth? No. I'm standing far enough away where I want it with just that guy and a few of his guards behind him. Uh, You create a magical zone that guards against deception in a 15-foot radius sphere centered on a point of your choice within range. Until the spell ends, the creature that enters the spell area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there must make a charisma saving throw. 
On a failed save, a creature can't speak a deliberate lie while in the radius. You know whether the creature succeeds or fails on its saving throw. An affected creature is aware of the spell and can thus avoid answering questions to which it would normally respond with a lie. Okay, he got a 15. Shit, it's 13. We'll say you got four guards in. You got one pass, one fail, one pass, one fail. So two of the guards failed, and they know that. And this guy knows you tried this and goes, I get it, I get it. You don't need to be so hostile, man. Listen, I'm not trying to be hostile. I'm just, I'm worried. You know what we're going against. I do. Well, I know a little bit, you know. I don't want to hear any more from you. Okay? He's pointing right at you, Jet. Mm -hmm. He takes a deep breath. We'll get you to this thing. You can follow the moon's channels. They, they, They branch off. But the whole point is that it's one waterway. It has one start and apparently has one end. But they all end up going to the same place, even though it branches off. Got you, got you. So going way to the bottom, that's where the scary shit is. That's why we're so close to the surface. Word. Not that we aren't branching off down there, right? And he's like looking at his other people. The other guards go, ha. What the fuck? Is that a dick joke? What are you talking about? No, we're just expanding. Is that another dick joke? Hey, you trying to upstage me right now? I don't know, dog. You're kind of just at the base of the steps if you're trying to be on stage. No, no more. You don't get to try this. Not in my city. We're not trying to try anything. We just want to find this thing and peace out. This place hella dark. I can see, as you can see from my beautiful eyes, I can see shit just fine. But we're just trying to get in and out. We're not trying to disturb you people, your ways of life. You're doing, you're doing your thing. You do you. You try falafel. I just tried that for the first time. It's hella good. <laughs> that might be something you want to add to your way of life. Listen, I never had that. Not big into new foods. I'm more of a bland guy. All right? <laughs> My favorite color is gray. <laughs> <laughs> here you can see just fine. And he looks around. With how many torches we got here, it's really not dark anymore. On a scale of light to dark, I'd say we're like just under dark. And he looks around <laughs> and you get a few of these guards going, Ha! Ha! <laughs> Why did you put dark at the top of the scale, bro? Like, wouldn't it wouldn't be under dark mean like it's the darkest dark? He looks for a moment and kind of looks into the abyss. Well, all right. So uh, getting you to the Nathrix. Yeah. So the Darrow probably have a better idea of where a Nathrix will be because they worship the thing. So if you go see them, just be out of O'Clock by the end of the week. Uh, what now did you say? Bless you. O'Clock. <laughs> okay. Well, just like if you got like a map or something and you just point to like where we, we go, we'll take it from there. He looks around for a moment and you can see the drow that walked up with you guys, the one who opened the gate. He walks up to the main guy with the halfling and whispers into his ear for a moment. All right, fine. You know, we can help you out. All right. We'll give you a little something. You, you know, you're worried about the vision. It gets dark down there. We got something that'll help you. You can stay here as long as you want. You will need to be accompanied. Fair, fair. Couple rules. All right, uh, whoever's going to accompany them, don't let them near the uh, spider things over there. What are they called again? None of them are speaking up. Come on, come on, what are they called? Nobody says anything. Thomas, what are they called? Steeders. And he goes, Steeder, I barely even know her. Did Thomas pass the zone of truth? No, Thomas did not pass the Zone of Truth. Thomas, did you think that was funny? (laughs) (laughs) He, like, opens his mouth, and then he just quickly shuts it again. I'm going to cast Suggestion on Thomas. Answer the question, Thomas. God damn it. Are you actually using a second-level spell? Yes. What kind of save is that? Uh, Wisdom save 15. That's a two. Excellent. No, sir, I did not laugh. (laughs) Hey, Thomas, does anybody think he's funny? Illsthir looks over to Thomas. Thomas, watch your tongue. He looks over to you guys. I am being generous here. Do not turn my guards against me. Takes a deep breath. He raises his hand over his shoulder and he goes and snaps. A drow man from behind him quickly moves closer and nods before Illsthir and says, Accompany them. And then he gathers his men 
he snaps at a man that you come in with and brings him off to the side to speak with him. So now there is this drow guard, a little younger guy who is here and says, I'm supposed to take you to get some some new stuff. All right. Lead the way, Hoss. I'm going to like lean back to uh, Blueberry or to the others and say something quietly. I'd like to try and say it without any of the drow hearing. I mean, there's just the one guy here now. Well, I don't want that one dude to hear me. Give me a deception. No, give me stealth, bitch. (laughs) 18. Okay. Dang. I would have been 23, but (laughs) anyway. It's fine. I know y'all saw that that halfling dude all chained up. It's not like a ton of our business, but if we make our way back through here, we can cause some havoc, get some people free. Let's just keep it cool for right now. The main drag of Galomir is dirt. It is a little bit lighter dirt than the grayish ground outside the walls. Again, there are these torches here lit so that those of you without dark vision can see. It almost looks like a nighttime city with streetlights to illuminate the area, along with like a few campfires and torches inside some of these buildings. The area closest to the gate is mostly made up of tent-like semi-permanent structures. Getting closer to them, you can see that most of the men and women here are dressed in similar fashion to the guards you saw in the very front with Ilsthir. A concentrated area of these tents surrounds a large black building with no windows off to the west. It looks heavily guarded, and just outside of this building are what look to be stables that are much wider than normal stables. Inside are giant spiders. Ew. One of which currently has a saddle on it. Oh, Whoa! What? That's dope as fuck. Were those the the steakers? Steeters. Steeters. Oh. Directly to your right is a walled off part of the city. This is a section of the city that has guards standing atop a wall, smaller than the outer wall, but still about 10 to 15 foot tall. They all seem to be watching over the other side of the wall. All of them have crossbows on their backs or in their hands. Straight ahead is an area where there are some permanent buildings which have more drow around the outside of them. And finally, just to the side of this area is another walled-in portion of the city. This one with a large open gate, which leads to an open courtyard where a castle sits. Yeah, this is Galamir. And he keeps walking towards the permanent fixtures. So you guys, like, been here before? Nope, first time. You like it here? It's, you know, it's fine. Were you born here? No, 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 this is a new place. Well, where are you from? I'm from Zakrathar. Oh, that's a dope cool, name. Cool. So what's uh what do you guys exactly do here? Oh, this is military encampment. Oh. Okay. Building up the armies, you know. You ready to fight somebody or is this just Always ready, always ready. That's what Ilsteer says. Okay, but like who though? Or like who are you trying to assault? Mostly the Darrow. Oh, alright, tight, tight. Wait, are those the folks we're supposed to be going to talk to? Yeah. The people who pray to the Nathrix? They pray to the Nathrix. Like, you don't have to talk to them. Well, how else are we going to find them? We don't need to find them. We're just finding the Nathrix. He just said go down the channels. He said, like, the Daryl might know more, and you could, like, go to Ocklock. I'm scared to go to Ocklock. Why? Nothing. What? Uh, no, 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 mm. no, 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 no. What's up? Nothing. No, 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 no. Why? What you talking about there, bud? Uh, nothing. (laughs) Why is there a castle in a military encampment? This is eventually going to be a city. Oh. All right, so anyway, why are you afraid of Othlock? Othlock? Oh, uh, I'm like scared to die. (laughs) <laughs> oh, word, 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 word. Right. Well, what's going to kill you there? <laughs> the Darrow. Yeah, Jit. They just oh. said that they're like, they're enemies or something. So like, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Is this like a kill on sight sort of deal or? <laughs> oh, it's definitely not for them. <laughs> are they blind? Oh, you guys really are tourists. Yeah, they're all blind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why they worship the thing because because you're not allowed to look at it, or maybe they all have looked at it, and that's why they're blind. And so many eyes, like bro, they all have so it has so many eyes, and their eyes don't work. It's just like you worship the thing that you can't have, you know. No, I mean I don't know why they worship the thing. It's kind of like scary. It's the eyes. This whole time you're walking towards this area of so many permanent structures, and he goes, "This is allotments." 
Uh huh. Nice. Can I look over to Xander and whisper to him? Hey, Xander. So, keep an eye out. When we pass through here, we're gonna steal some stickers, free everybody, and cause mayhem. Okay? We need to make mental notes of where everything is, because I can't let that guy stay here, man. Uh, yeah. All right. Good call. I'm just gonna start taking pictures of everything. Perfect. Mental notes, physical notes. Fuck yeah. Xander's always taking pictures. The allotment area is small. It's only five buildings. They're all made of dark metals and stone with these large pillars supporting their heavily weighted roofs. One long building looks to be housing for the merchants and those who are not part of the military organization. Three of the other buildings are almost exactly the same size and shape. Square buildings, one story, single door on the front with a simple sign. The three signs on these buildings are rations, weaponry, field aid. The last building looks a little bit different. It's the same size and shape as the other buildings, but it's more colorful. It's still overall very dark, but small splashes of color here and there. There are small fungal plants have been planted into the rafters holding up the front of the roof. Some lightly colored stones of scarlet and azure hues have been pasted to the door in an abstract mosaic. The sign on this door says medical. You can see the drow continues walking up. He goes to the field aid office. He says, all right, in here. You guys are like technically allowed to like go into the other ones if you want. Is there something we could use in there? Rations will give you food, medical if you're like dying. Are you, are you still hurt, Sebastian? I'm feeling a little better, but I I could use a nap. Oh damn, bro, you're not feeling good? And I'll slap him on the shoulder, send him some good vibes, hit him with the healing light. I'm gonna use two. Ten health. Hoo-hoo! Oh shit, okay, well. Xander's hand is caffeinated. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I am reinvigorated. So he walks into the field aid office. Okay. Follow. Yo. There is a single man here who is manning a counter. Drow guy. As you all walk in, you can see he was kind of like slouching, tired. And then you all walk in. He quickly stands up straight and looks very important. Yes, sir. What can I do? Yeah, we need to get them some Fares Res goggles. Some what now? Fares Res. Okay. Fares Res. What are these goggles? Fares Res. To help you see. The shopkeep in the back says, Yes, sir! And he goes over to grab a couple pairs of these goggles, and he puts them on the desk in front of you. Thanks, shopkeep. I'm gonna smack a bitch. <laughs> And the guy you're with goes, yeah, so like, where are these? I know you guys' eyes don't work great, but these will help you see further. Whenever there's Fares Res around. What's a Fares Res? What is that again? Fares Res? You know that, like, green kind of fog? Yeah. Yeah, that's Fares Res. It's like, I, it's like leftover magic that's like in to under dark, and it tends to, like, gather up in areas that, like, a lot of plant life is. These things, when you put them on, that, like, essence kind of glows a little bit and gives off light. Cool. Oh, uh-huh. These will essentially give you a version of dark vision whenever there's Fares Rest around. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that, but you can still see in color. It's not only grayscale. 60 feet as if it was bright light and another 60 feet as if it was dim light. Those with dark vision, it just extends those ranges by another 60 feet. Dang. Question. Can we catch it in a bottle? You could, and it would kind of act like a torch. Yeah. That's a smart idea, actually, is yeah. to do that, and then people who aren't wearing the goggles don't see the light coming from it. Uh-huh. That is very smart. Good job, Vince slash Jet. Yeah, no, you get you get inspiration for that. I didn't even think of anything like that. Thank you. Hey, hey, bud, what's what's your name? Oh, yeah, I thought I heard someone say that earlier, but I thought they were just, I don't know, struggling with their words. Okay, cool. Uh, so, hey, zzz, do, you, do you have a bottle? Hey, you got a bottle? Sir, yes, sir. Can, can I get a couple? Like four? <laughs> yeah, get them, get them like four. You might be the best shopkeep I've ever met. I swear to God, I'm going to smack someone. This is what I needed to get you, and now I just got to follow you around until you leave Galamir. Yo, let's check out them, them weapons. 
Is there any of the fog around us? You're still in this allotment, and you pop out, and yeah, there is. All around Galamir, they have this plant life. It does seem like this weird greenish fog is giving off light, and you can see it is more concentrated around certain plant life. Okay. So I want to go to the most concentrated part of it and fill each bottle up as much as I can with the fog and close them shut with some of my spare cloth that I have. I just want to wrap it around each one so that we can take the cloth off anytime we want for light. This is going to take you a minute. So if you want to just take a minute to do this, make these little covers while the others go into the weaponry, they'll give you plenty of time. Looking like an absolute madman just swinging his arms around in the fog. Yeah, Jet's going a little crazy. It's like, oh, oh, they're splitting up. They're splitting up. Okay, you guys go in there and I'll stay out here. Okay. Can you keep the door open? Yeah. You walk into the weaponry area and there is a drow woman here. You can see she turns around. She grabs a chunk of leather armor and puts it on and just grabs a short sword, puts it down. Oh, uh, no, what's good, mama? We good. We got... We're we're set on armor and, like, weapons and shit. We good? We just came in to see what... You got anything special? She, like, grabs the leather and puts it back, puts the short swords in a bucket. I'm gonna pull out a short sword that I have. Would you want to buy this? Grabs it and looks at it. I don't know. It's fine. I'll give you, like, two gold for it. Oh, no. It's okay. If you can do five, then good, but no. That's all right. I mean, we make our own. Yeah, that's fair. You want, like, fancy stuff? Yeah, you got anything cool? And she, like, points behind her, and you can see that there is this black netting. Pretty small. That one's pretty good. What is it? A net? Oh, it's like a net. It's got poison and stuff. It almost looks like the net has thorns on it. Am I, uh, am I back in yet, or am I still feeling battles? Yeah, we'll say you can pop back in. How much is the net? 45. Can it be used over and over again? Yeah, I mean, unless someone breaks it. Is it big enough to cover an athrix? No. <laughs> well. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, okay. You know, you've convinced me. I'm sold. This is the neurotoxic net. 45, you said? 45 gold. That is going to be very useful. Oh, yeah, and this. You can see that there is a tunic. That looks like it is made of these very thin woven white strands. And this and is. And what is that? Did the stickers make that? Steeters? Uh, the big spider things? Oh, yeah. I knew it. But it's like fancy spider silk. Interesting. Oh. Does it have special benefits? Oh, yeah. I don't know how they did it, but like, you can go invisible. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, it's pretty tight. It is essentially normal leather armor that has an enchantment that allows you to cast invisibility once per day. Oh my god. That's probably really expensive. Yeah, 500. Ugh. Nope. That could be really useful, though. Yeah. All right, you got 500 gold? I'll, I'll chip in. I'll throw what I got. I'll pay half right now. I don't even have half. You want that blue? I'll give you half right now. I can also help. I don't need it, but damn, yeah, that could be useful. How much gold you got, Jet? You're not spending or are you not telling us? <laughs> don't worry about it. No, I, I don't. I'm going to save. Xander? I can't afford that. That's outside of my range. Jet finishes packing up his net, tss, opens the door. You guys good? How is that spelled? S-S-Z-Z-T. Uh, I feel like it should be pronounced longer then. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was just S-Z-T. Or like even silent T at the start brings you outside of the weaponry office. You have a new net. And goggles. And jars of fog. Have you distributed the bottle so we each have one now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's go back to wherever we're going. Oh, channels. You're, you guys are going to the channels? Yeah. Oh, God. I gotta take you all the way there. All right. You guys good then? You got anything else? Can we visit the stickers? Oh, yeah. You want to go see the Steeders? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm, okay, so, like, you just can't touch them. Okay. Yeah, let's go see them. Do they bite? They can bite, but they don't normally bite us anymore. They only eat plants. So you start moving closer to this large building. It's completely blocked off from the outside. No windows at all. 
the building is in the shape of the letter V. And where the two sections of the building meet, there's an entryway that is blocked and has huge gates in the front that are currently closed. Off to the side is this little stables area where you saw the spiders earlier, and you can see a bunch of them are in these stables. Many of them are currently chewing on some blue leafy plants. It's like a whole stable of blueberries. Ah! Uh... Giant spiders that only eat veggies. Hey. What? Are you calling blueberry a spider? She's been a spider. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How do y'all grow plants down here? Okay, so you know like the goggles you're wearing? Yeah. You know how the fair stress, that actually like helps the plants grow, which is why it like gathers around plants. Um, mm. all right. What does sun do to you? I get like itchy and then I can't <laughs> focus and then my eyes hurt real bad. Okay, oh. so, but it doesn't like burn you. I, I only been in sun once. So it's like closer to hives than like poison ivy. So yeah, these are steeders. We breed them in there and he points to the V-shaped building. The good ones come out here. What are their names? This one here is Relish. And this one here is Ketchup. Oh. And then this one over here is Mayonnaise. This one over here is Tzatziki. This one over here is Worcestershire. <laughs> <laughs> and then that one over there is Chipotle Ranch. When one of them dies, do you just like recycle that name? It's like... Because there's only so many condiments, bro. In Gallomir, we do, like, the condiment thing. But in Zakrathar, they do colors. Yeah, but, like, when one of these dies, Chipotle Ranch dies, and then the new baby that was born that day becomes Chipotle Ranch. No, that would probably be, like, Chipotle Ioli. Keep it, like, kind of consistent. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> Love me a good aioli. What are we doing? Where? What's... <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it... Are we supposed to be going on a quest? <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> Can I see from here how the spiders are, like, held inside? They are kind of not. They aren't really chained up. They're, like, in their own little stalls and eating food. So it looks like these would be able to climb out if they wanted to. And the doors don't look like they got latches or, or locks on them. The stables doesn't even really have doors. It has a little bit of a fence to keep people out of their area, but it's more just areas for the spiders to go. Cool, this is so cute. I just wanted to see that. Okay, we can go. Okay, so we're going to go to docks, all right? The docks that lead to Ocklock? Oh, well, you're going to pass Ocklock? Uh, um, oh, you're making a dock lock joke, got it. Yeah, that's all. Well, because of where the docks are, you go to the docks, and then you have to go through a lock, and then you get to Ocklock. The dock locks of Ocklock. Man. I wish Ilsteer had better jokes like that. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> so leading away from the city, you start heading to an area that is much darker than Galomir itself. This quickly becomes no longer even dim light in this area, but you are on like a fairly well-traveled path. But then when you put on your Fairshrez goggles, you can see decently far away. There's no torches or anything placed here. Why don't you all give me investigation checks while you're on this path? Investigation? Can I just take... Whatever, I, I threw my dice out, I grabbed it from my thing, and then it threw across the room, and it landed on my phone, and it's a natural 20. Can I take that, or do you want me sure. to actually? Sure. Cool. <laughs> Nine. Eighteen. And it has to be investigation, not perception? If you would like to do a perception check, I will allow you to do so. You'll just get different information. Okay, yeah, I'll take a 16 perception. Okay, let's start with Sebastian, and was it Xander who got an 18? So Sebastian and Xander... Sebastian, especially, you got these new glasses and you are seeing far and you're like hype because you haven't seen this much in a very long time. So you're looking at every little thing. There are a lot of spider tracks and many footprints on the ground here going both directions. As you're walking around, you can see a few cart tracks. There's blood here and there that is on the ground. It looks like people who have been traveling this way have been bleeding in some cases. There are some nearby moist and wet rocks. You can see that there is a small lizard hiding underneath one of these. And as you guys are walking, you can see a bunch of skittering away. Blueberry, with your perception check, you can see that a decent portion, 70 feet away from this path in a different direction, you can see a dead dragonborn corpse. It looks like it has been shot by crossbows and it has been 
feasted on by some large creatures. Okay. Continuing along, you walk for some time. The path meanders around large stalagmites. The air here tastes very stale. A bit further down this path, you see an area of just a ton of huge stalagmites. This literally looks like a mountain range of stalagmites that are very tall and very sharp, hundreds and even thousands of feet tall. This path continues towards these stalagmites, and you can start to hear something. Running water. Not fast, not very loud, more like a calm trickle in the distance. It's the same direction as these stalagmites. Following the path, you round this almost underground mountain range. You start to see an underground lake. The lake itself is very dark. The water looks almost gray with the complete lack of light. You cannot really see anything below the surface. You can see that there is a misty glow of fair res along the top of it. But underneath the water, there is just darkness. The path continues between this lake and the mountainous slagmites towards a settlement. There's a lot of light at the settlement, and you can see the architecture here is much different from the likes of Galomir. Very plain walls on these structures, very non-ornamental, purely function, not for show. There's also a large dock area on this lake where a lot of light is, and there are a lot of drow around you, and you can hear some barking orders. From here, you can tell that there are a few large, flat barges sitting on the water. One has a large trebuchet on top of it and is anchored just off the docks. The others are right up connected to the docks. One is even being hoisted out of the docks by a large crane. And there seems to be most activity around this barge. And there are other buildings in the distance about a few hundred feet further. And is like, okay, you just want the boat and to get going? Yeah, I mean, unless you have any other suggestions. Probably not. There's nothing too exciting here. They're just, you know, building and, and mining and stuff. Why do you have trebuchets on the water? Okay, so like Aklok is like right on a lake. Oh. I'm going to lean over to uh to Jet and be like, are those things not called trebuchets? Um. <laughs> just pat them on the shoulder and just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's just keep that one between us. I have blackmail now. If he said that out loud, then I'm going to be like, I'm the better liar and slap him on the back and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> he continues forward, moving towards the docks. You can see a group of drow that start shuffling quickly to grab weapons, and they start screaming, Hey! Puts his hand up and says, Special orders. They're fine. The drow are hesitant at first, but go back to guarding a slew of people in chains. Many of them have chains connected to their feet and connected to each other as they move around. The majority of enslaved people here are dragonborn. The next biggest chunk of people here are dwarven, or at least they look it. But their skin is very gray. They are mostly bald, and many of them have tattoos along their forearms and on their necks. These are very geometric tattoos. They seem to be more like symbols or words on their bodies rather than artwork. There's also one man who is standing out as an enslaved person here. A halfling man is currently stood up on a crate with a large sheet of paper in his hand. The others come to him for direction as they are continuing to build upon one of these large barges that is hoisted out of the lake. Hey yo, Scissor, what's uh what's going on here? Oh, we're building barges. No, 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 like the uh, the folks with the chains. Oh, the slaves? Yeah. They're doing the work. Where where y'all get your labor force? Oh, I mean, I wasn't part of, like, the group that was sent up to the surface, so I don't know exactly. You guys just go to the surface and, and steal people all the time? Like, is this normal for you? No, it's actually kind of new. We weren't sent a lot of people into Galamir, and then, like, Aklok has been kind of hard to take. But, like, once we take over Aklok, we'll have plenty of slaves. Mm. We, well, um, all right. No, no further questions, Jet. No further questions. We'll, 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 we'll discuss this later. We got. It's fine. It's fine. We, we can talk about it more later on. It's fine. If you do have questions, just let me know. I was, uh, I was top of my class, so. Mm. Proud of you, bro. I'll hit him for a dap. Seventeen. Yeah, man. He knows. All right. Yeah. Oh, I've heard about this one. I did it with a mitten hand. As he pulls away, he pulls off the mitten, 
Because I accidentally do remove curse. <gasps> he hits that dap. And the mitten slides off of your hand, Xander. <gasps> oh my ah! god! Oh my god! Oh, oh. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Yo, good looks, bro. Thanks. Appreciate it. Here, here's this. No, I don't want it. You, it's all yours, bro. It's, that's, that's a present for you. This is ugly. Well, <laughs> hey, it keeps you warm. And he throws it at the ground. No, I don't want it. All right, well, happy birthday to the ground, Mitten. <laughs> Fuck off. Dude, how the hell did you just do that? I don't know. Ask him. He's the one that pulled it off. Damn. Zzz. Top of my class. like I said. Yeah, man. Scissor got my back. Jet's just looking at him with, like, huge eyes. You hear this halfling man. Okay, yeah, so if we do if we do this, we should be able to actually finish it faster because we can we can bypass this the need for this. He's not really talking to you, he's talking to a group of dragonborn. You can see that there is a male white dragonborn here. And he walks up and he goes, Yeah, Anton, we can do that actually real good from over here. And he like points to another area and they're like conversing. This white dragonborn looks like he's relatively new compared to how dirty all of the other dragonborn are. So it's like, okay, so... And he, like, looks for a random drought. So I need to get them, like, a rowboat. And the other drought points them to the right direction. We don't keep those on the water anymore. You gotta go into the settlement a little bit. That's fine. All right, let's go. Okay. Moving past the docks and towards this settlement. The first building you come across on your right looks to be an old temple. Above the door is a very rudimentary symbol. It is an oval that is wider on the sides and shorter top to bottom, surrounded by six circles. Outside this temple is a small courtyard with a bunch of old pillars that held up a wall on the outside of the courtyard. There are currently some of these large riding spiders or steeders tied up in these pillars. There are a few small carts here that look like they have been connected to the saddles of these things. Further ahead of you, you can see the largest building in this area has a large forge outside of it, currently burning very brightly. And just next door to this forge is a cave that heads into one of these large stalagmite mountains. This looks man-made, and there are some minecarts here that are filled with small rocks and rubble sitting just off the tracks of this tunnel. That is what the symbol above the temple looks like. It looks like the Nathrix. It does. Or like a paw print both ways. That's two very different things. <laughs> Let's get this boat, gamers. He goes over towards the forge where you can see they have brought in some stuff on these boats and like pulled them up here. There are some like supplies and everything. S starts emptying one of the boats. All right, here you go. Okay. Uh, thanks. This is... Hey, don't die, by the way. Thanks. You seem cool. You you too. Z don't let uh ills ills there ills there. Ills there. Yeah, don't don't let him get you down, man. He's just a dickhead. I know, but he's Delzoc, so I don't know what that means. Oh, tourist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your help. I'm gonna flick him a gold. Oh, oh, oh. your boy's gonna play cards tonight. <laughs> I just had the realization of why they're called steeders. They're steeds, but they're spiders. Wow. Oh. Wow. Xander said that out loud while everyone's saying <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> they should, you should call them speeders because you go fast. Speeders. Oh, um, hold on. This is one of Ill's Deer's favorites. They can go pretty fast. They can really get a gallop going. Okay. All right, goodbye. Ah. <laughs> uh. Pop any of those boats, you all are given some oars. The drow direct you to a nearby man-made wall of this lake. On the other end of this lake, you can see that there is a river running by it. It seems to be that this lake was filled using water from this river, and these locks have been created to get ships into and out of the lake without disrupting the flow of the river. The drow lower the first wall, and a small rush of water from the lake propels you forward into this lock. The barrier behind you goes back up before the one in front of you is lowered. The river itself is not moving very fast at all. Very minor waves and movement as it meanders through the underdark. Is there like stuff in the water? Can we see through the water? Give me perception. 25? 
it's hard to see into the darkness. You are very perceptive. You have your your goggles on, plus your your natural dark vision, so you can see like a bit into like this cloudyish, murkyish water. There's definitely plant life. You can actually feel it hitting the bottom of the boat every once in a while. You can see there are interesting looking fish, but they don't seem to pay you much mind. They're just kind of doing their thing. There is a lot of movement. Is there anything you would want to do as your boat hits the river and you are out of earshot of the drow behind you? So we're just paying no mind to the the Darrow, right? Are we just we just going right for it? Do we see any point in talking to him? I mean, if we talk to them, what? They're going to tell us that the Nathrix is actually, like, the most holy, amazing moral creature ever, and then we're going to feel bad killing it, but we literally have to? Plus, I guess they could get pretty mad that we're killing their god. Yeah. We don't have to kill it. We also don't have to tell them that we're going to kill it. True. We're allowed to lie. We don't We don't have to interact with them at all. Okay, but, 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 all right, I think we still should, though, because they can probably tell us where where this thing actually is, because, like... It doesn't sound like the drow up there knew what they were talking about besides like, oh, just follow the thing down. They're just like running off assumptions. Oh, yeah, and they said that Dara would probably know more. Yeah, so I think we should talk to them, but I do think that we should lie to them and not tell them that we're going to attack it, you know? Uh, okay, I don't like lying, so someone else do it. Y'all can stay in the boat, that's fine. I'll lie to them. If they're all blind, we can just play it off like we're one of them. They're not going to know any better. Why are they blind? Are they born blind? Do they blind themselves? Like I, uh, my, my my assumption is if they're worshiping this creature that turns everyone blind, like I feel like they're doing it willingly. Does it turn people blind? Did someone say that? It does something if you look in it in the eye. Sebastian made that up. Made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> From the information you know, the Nathrix has glossy eyes that are pupilless. Yeah, but what happened What happened to the dude who looked into its eyeball? It's not when you look at the Nathrix, it's when the Nathrix looks at you. Yeah, that. So yeah, what happens? Do you go blind? They go blind. Turn to stone, you die, you explode. It was basically that a surge of wild magic went through him. That's why Matthias thinks that this will work in helping Kingsley. Think about those, like fish and them frogs that like don't have eyes because they just spend their entire lives in dark places. Like we could get down there and there's zero light because they were all just born without eyes. Their their bodies just developed into eyeless, sightless homies. I don't think we got to worry about the blindness. I don't think we got to worry about too much. Like we'll just be like, oh, we're travelers. We're just trying to we're trying to navigate the underdark and do some cartography or some shit. I don't know. We'll think of something. But we should talk to them, get some info, have them point us towards the Nathrix. Do we say we're looking for it or we're trying to avoid it? Ooh, that's a good call. We'll say we're trying to avoid it, so they should tell us the exact spot to not go to so that we can map <laughs> everything else around it. Yeah, no, I think I think that would be solid. I don't I mean, I don't know what these people are gonna be like, but like, we got this. We got this. What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? Is they get angry and we're like, oh no, and then we fucking peace. I don't know. We got a boat. Do we see people from here? Where where are we? how far are we from them? You are basically on the river, and there is no humanoid life nearby. But yeah, the the current is kind of slowly taking you. This is still a very open area of the Underdark. Like, this is still this massive cavern. It just happens to be the river flowing through it. That's tight. This place is cool as fuck. So we even know, like, where to find these da- Darrow, Darrow people? This is told you that they were along the Moonless Channels. It was the next city down. Go till we find land. So you guys want to pull over when we f- see something? Yeah. Might as well. Yeah, uh, that's probably the best thing we could do right now. We can keep the engine running if anyone wants to go in and talk to him. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go. Is that just me staying on with the oars? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <my hands? laughs> you are not on the river for more than 10 minutes before it opens into an area that is much wider. There's still movement here with the water, but you are relying even more on your oars to propel you forward. This is almost like another lake with how wide it is. You are currently arriving in this lake from the east, and on the southern shore is a large city that is lit from the inside. It's lit? Uh Yes. It it has, like, artificial lighting? It looks like fires and stuff like that. Mm -mm. Mm, Unless they're cooking, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, why would it be lit? Uh Not that type of lit. 
So, yes, the city is lit from the inside. <laughs> Looks like fires and stuff like that. There are very plain walls made of stone. Very similar architecture to the encampment that you just left, though much larger. The lake itself continues much further to the west and slightly northward. You currently cannot see the end of this lake, however. The Ocklock is a dock? <laughs> the Ocklock dock. Wait, the what? How do we know when we see the Ocklock? I mean, this is the first city you've seen. So this has to be it, even though it's lit. <laughs> All right, let's pull over. Is there a spot that's easy to pull over? Is there a dock at Ock Lock? Dock Ock? <laughs> dock Ock. Dock Ock? Dock Ock is in the Dock Lock Ock Lock. Does Dock Ock live in Ock Lock? I know. Is, is Ock Lock the origin city of Dock Ock? <laughs> <laughs> I bet Dock Ock visits the docks of Ock Lock. <laughs> I really liked the name of this city before this episode, and now I'm regretting all of my decisions. We will no longer mock Ocklock. <laughs> I, I knew you had something. Move on. We'll put a sock in it. Don't worry. <laughs> ah, don't do this. Come on, guys. We're on the clock. <laughs> okay. Heading towards this city, you make progress slowly but surely. The small boat takes a bit to get moving, and with the relatively slow current, you end up moving the boat with relative ease. You are about 100 feet from a small dock area. There are not any boats here, and this looks like super run down. This is a large city. It is hard to tell from what you can see like in the darkness. It looks at least two to three times the size of Gallomere. Docking yourself here, you can see that there is not even an entrance to the city in this area. Should we... Dock and lock here, or what? Yeah, I just we don't want to split up and not be able to communicate. If one or two are going in, we might as well all go in. But if there's no entrance, how how are we getting in? How far do we have to walk around? Is there a path that we see anywhere? There are, like, walkways. And there's plenty of room to, like, walk around the outside of the wall of this city. Do you guys just want to follow some of these, see if we could find an entrance? I suppose. Uh, let's see what else we could do. It's the only option we really got right now. From inside the city, every once in a while you will hear a loud clicking sound. And they come in a couple different tones. And it sounds like a rock hitting something. But it's not in any specific order. It is kind of random. You can hear it from multiple positions in the city as you are walking around. Let's walk to the rock. Yeah. <laughs> walk to the rock outside the docks of Ocklock. <laughs> you think they're using those rocks for, like, echolocation or something? <gasps> maybe. Ooh. Why are they different pitch, though? Well, maybe it's a way of communication. Y'all can still talk when you're blind. You continue along this pathway. You start to come up upon a light coming from around this wall. You finally make a turn to see a gate to the city. It's currently closed. And in front of this gate are two gray-skinned gnomes, completely pupilless, eyes completely white, they are both riding large, eight-legged lizards made of bright blue scales. Oh. And for today, that's a wrap. What? Damn. Oh. Dope. I don't know if you want to put a lot of stock in this, but why do they have light? <laughs> wow. As you say, why do they have light? You see that these lizards have eyes, you fuck. <laughs> 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 I knew you guys were going to roast me. All right, we'll talk about it uh, in one week on the behind the scenes. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Guess what? Your boy's DMing. Oh, my gosh. On September 1st, the after party is going to be a one shot run by yours truly. This is the first ever one shot I have done almost period. I have ran one session of Curse of Strahd prior to this and we didn't even get to combat, so this went absolutely insane. So, if you want to check it out, 
patreon.com slash cast party is where you'll find loads of exclusive content from the cast and crew, including my one shot poop bird poop fight. Yes, you heard right. The after party drops the first of every month for our patrons. And if you loved our free episode of Yarrow's super happy fun murder dungeon, you will adore the crazy one shots and mini series that we've got waiting for you. So head on over to patreon.com slash cast party to become an official part of our casting crew. You'll also receive access to our community discord where we host live listening parties with all of us on the release night of every cast party episode. We've also got a bunch of community games going on right now. So feel free to join on in. You'll also get entry into our merch giveaway that we do at the end of every single cast party episode. Speaking of, this episode's merch giveaway winner is Julian. But hey, if you want some Cast Party merch for yourself, head on over to cast-party.myshopify.com. Shirts, stickers, water bottles, and so much more coming soon for fall and winter. Thank you all again for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks to see what lies in Ocklock. See ya! AC's off, we're set. Yo, I was cutting onions with a mandolin, and I took off like a big section of my thumb. Who, why, why, when you're using a mandolin, why are you holding it like this, like an idiot? You gotta do the flat palm. I didn't mean to. I tried grabbing it better because it was stuck, and then I pushed it down, and then it like twisted, and then my finger went thunk. I was like, uh-oh. Ah. <laughs> Does mandolin mean something else? Yeah, it's it's like the swishy thing. Yeah. <laughs> what? Squishy thing. Squishy thing. It's a it's a thin slicer, yeah. The swish, swishy thing. Swishy. Oh, swishy. <laughs> Not squishy. Okay. Like a deli slicer? Anna's thinking of the instrument, correct? Yeah. I, I also recently learned those are called a mandolin. All right. The one I posted is actually fancy and has like a guard for whatever you're oh slicing. Oh, my God. I would love that. Normally, it does not have that. But yeah, so you slide it and that blade right in the middle will slice your fingers off if you're not holding it like that. Oh! Yeah, so that's what I did to my, my little thummy thumb. Oh! Ouch. Don't like. And it was funny because I'm sitting here thinking, I'm not smart right now. I might chop my thumb off. And then I did like two seconds later. <laughs> Yeah, then you continued. <laughs> yeah. there, there are gloves right there in the picture. <laughs> yeah, about that. I guess I could just do that for you guys, too, to help. Thanks, Dad. Whoa. Ooh. This is stables. This is wall. Val. 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 Castle. Gissel. Gilsk. Gilsk. <laughs> that does my gizzle. 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 I'm sorry. It's hard writing with a mouse. <laughs> this is Val. This is Gizzle. <laughs> Stop just roasting me. Well, we can never call them anything else now, so. <laughs> this is E. E. Let's be, let me try to write stable. There. I don't know what that's supposed to be. This is Stittle. 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 It is Stittle. <laughs> Look at the Stittle. <laughs> oh, I can't sorry. wait to get back to Gisel Ferrile. <laughs> <laughs>